94, 98, 02, the trades were with uh, John, John Lowen. Uh, in 94, the correction officer was last year with uh, Lowen. Um, this year, 1199, uh, all of the building trades, not a bunch of locals in Stanford, uh, all of the building trades, UAW, the Teamsters who were on strike that uh, support them, the Statewide Communication Workers of America, uh, Council 15, the police officers of Aspen, were all endorsed by PMC. And I'm not kidding, we had 300 of them at Gateway College in North Haven sitting down. In their first meeting, we were going to lay out how they're going to organize fields. We've got three months to go to the primary, and then we got three months to go to the general. We'll have the field organization to win them. And that organization doesn't default to anybody. It's been earned, it's working together. The, the primary, in some ways, is a good way, is a run up to the general. And the third thing is message. The third thing is about message. And it is exactly to this point of what this campaign is about. And I gave it to you three ways. I'm going to give it to you one other way that I think about it. Is, is the dark sort of too connected? And there is this Wall Street part of, of the state uh, down in another part that does look down there, and they're doing pretty well, God bless them. And then there's everybody else. And everybody else is working pretty hard, and that's the majority of the state. And you know what? Let's speak to their issues. What are their issues? It's these people, it's Sikorsky, who went on strike. Now, I can tell you something. I went down to the strike line a couple times. Go talk to people. You know, you start talking. I said, I said, I can't imagine. That's true. I said, I can't imagine going without a paycheck without the seven, seven weeks. I honestly couldn't. I mean, paying two college tuitions at the end of the month is an exciting period of time. You know, we can figure out, you know, what it is. You know, I mean, it was literally tough. And, you know, happy to step in our marriage as a kindergarten teacher. I earn a pretty good salary. We're both working. You know, and I say, you know, how do you make ends meet? I mean, how, how do you do this? And you tell you second jobs and stuff like that. And I left the strike line one day thinking, you know what? You're on strike for medical benefits. And you know who they probably all voted for four years ago? I was at John Rowe. John Rowe. You know, let's speak. That's why universal health care is important. It's not an issue of the poor. It's a middle class issue. It's a working class issue. Say it again. The 370,000 people, you know this, who don't have insurance, they're working. And you know it in your own lives. You know, the huge fear right now is medical benefits. It's not going to be there for you when you're going to need it or a family member that. You all know that this is a scary thing for a lot of families. It, it is entirely about this thing. I go to these towns, you know, is doing this. And, you know, you go on a Tuesday night this time of year, you know what they're all doing. You don't see the registrars there because they're having budget referendums. And you got this huge fight between those that have kids and those that don't have kids in the school district fighting over resources and choices in the, in the town. It's, it's, it's this, this scary thing of being dead last in job growth. And what that means, I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a UConn story. Um, I don't know if you ever read this book. Uh, it was written by a guy who writes for the New York Times called The World is Black. His name is, is, is Tom Friedman. Favorite, they're going to tell you my story from this book. What do we all have to do by April 15th? <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's what he wrote in the book. 2002, 25,000 Americans, they go to their accountants and say, Bernie, here are my papers. Uh, you don't have to do it. Don't worry. Here are my papers. Please do my tax returns. So what does he do? Before he goes home that night, he takes the papers, digitalizes the information, puts it on a fiber optic cable, and sends it overseas to India. India. Goes home that night, because it's morning in India, comes in the next morning, turns on the computer, downloads the completed tax return. 25,000 returns were done that way in 02. You know how many were done that way in 2003? 100,000. You want to know how many were done that way in 2004? 400,000 <coughs> tax returns were done that way. What was the point of the story? Work today could be done by anybody anywhere. And I was talking about a UConn graduation. I graduated, 20, Kathy and I graduated 29 years ago, class of 77 UConn. I lived in Crandall D and South Campus at UConn. There were 66 kids in our dorm, 44 guys, 22 women. We were 66 kids from Connecticut. And you know what, those other 65 kids? That was my competition. Danny and Stefano, those 4,000 kids that graduated yesterday, and their competition, not their competition, 
Fair competition are kids who are waking up right now in countries that were part of what used to be the Soviet Union, which are now free market economies. Fair competition, kids who have been up already now several hours in communist China, which may still be communist, but is a free market economy, competing with us, taking our steel, taking our petroleum products, our concrete, it's a different world. And we don't send our kids out ready to compete on it. Oh yeah, go speak to things about pre-K uh, education. Go speak about lowering class size in kindergarten, first and second grade. Talk about scholarship, because remember something about Connecticut. There was a question here originally a half hour ago. <laughs> Here's the thing to remember about Connecticut. We're in this competition. We're never going to win, guys, because we're the lowest cost state. We're not going to be the lowest cost state. If any of you doubt it, go home tonight, take out your heating bills for the winter, and you'll remember we're not the lowest cost state. But I would suggest to you our ambition ought not to be become <coughs> Mississippi, which is the lowest cost state. Our goal is to be what we can do well, the best place to live, the best hometowns, the best public, public schools. We need to have a different set of terms to compete on than from Mississippi. How do we beat her? We beat her because of mom. Because our ideas speak to these working families and the idea that government can make a difference in people's lives. I don't know about you, but with two degrees from your time, I'm a product of the investment, for good or ill, the investment of thousands of Connecticut residents who made sure there was a world-class state university for me and my wife to attend and now for my boy to uh, one of my boys to uh, to attend. We build it with our ideas. We build it with a great field operation. Right? You guys know how it's done. Voter ID, contact, voter ID, persuasion, turnout. You know, that's how you do this. And the third thing is you have enough money to tell the story. Right? You have the best story in the world. But if no one can hear it, you're dead. <coughs> Always count on mom. 